Hello teachers, I'm Mary and today I'm here to talk about the mistakes I have made in the past few years working as an online teacher. You better prepare yourself because this might be a five hour talk. So to make this video more interesting, I'm going to call it 10 things I wish I knew before becoming an online teacher. Quick reminder, I just teach direct students. So I manage my own schedule, materials, payment, social media. If you work for an online company, maybe the issues you're facing are, are different. Okay, so let's just go and see the 10 things you shouldn't do as an online teacher from my point of view. So first one is don't be afraid of the silence. When we teach group lessons or face-to-face -face lessons, we usually give students time for them to think about the answers, to read the activities, right? So when it comes to online teaching, I know it can, it can be a bit strange, you know, to be staring at the camera for maybe two or three minutes, just waiting for the student to give you the answer. But this is normal and we should accept that the student needs to think. Okay, so you have to give them this time. Of course, it's even worse, you know, when you've got just one student and it's not very comfortable, but actually you have to get used to it because it's part of the process. They have to assimilate, they have to think about things. Okay, so teachers usually say that the perfect lesson would, would involve 80% of students talking time and only 20% of teachers talking time. So you should talk um, less than your student, your students should be talking, not you. Although I know that we love talking, right? That's why we are teachers. <laughs> so the second one is take payments in advance. Especially if you are a private teacher teaching, uh, managing your own direct students and their payments, you have to remember that you are selling them a service. Okay, so if they go like, teacher, my boss told me that this month my salary payment in advance. Oh, my mother told me that uh, money payment in advance. Okay, one of the worst things that can happen is that you start to feel very uncomfortable because you have to be chasing um, payments. You have to be sending the message and say, mm, just a quick reminder, you haven't paid for. So this creates a terrible atmosphere, right? And you can lose the students because of that, because then you, you don't see the point why I'm teaching this person if they are not teaching me. So in my case, what I do is I offer them a trial lesson. It's for free. Usually it's half an hour, 45 minutes. And if they decide they are going to take my lesson, I sell them a 10 lesson pack. So they have to pay for the pack in advance. Okay, no exceptions. Don't fall into this trap. So third is don't book 100 lessons in a row. Okay, so remember that we are human beings. So sometimes we need to go to the toilet to grab some water to stretch our legs. So for your own health and safety, don't book like eight lessons with no breaks between them. Okay, so I've done this before and of course it was terrible. And of course I was two or three minutes late for each lesson. So it's just better to, to give yourself a 10 minutes break. You can go grab something. And then of course you've got lunch break as well. So just don't try to do them um, in a row because online lessons are very, very intense. You know, you're just focused on the screen all the time. So you need these minutes just to relax and to, to start again. Okay. So the fourth mistake that I've made was getting too personal. Okay, so students love talking about their lives and obviously as a teacher you're going to ask them for their hobbies, their family, their studies, uh, work and this and you're going to tell them a bit about yourself. So this is normal but we have to remember there is a line and we shouldn't cross that line because we are not therapists. Right, so it's very easy for a student to start seeing you as a therapist as it's just someone in front of the camera, they can trust you, they can talk to you, you know, it's online so usually you don't know people that are around them so they can feel safe talking to you, but that is, that is a limit. Okay, so because of course, if they've got um, other goals, if they want to learn English, okay, it can be good, uh, talk, but some of them, they've got problems, they need emotional support, they need, they are depressed, or they have serious things that you as a teacher cannot deal with them because we are not prepared for this. 
So we can, if you identify that the student is struggling emotionally, of course you can try, if it's a child or a teenager, you can try to talk to the parents or if it's an adult, you can tell them, look, maybe you should look for this and this support, but don't allow students to control the lesson and to be talking for one hour about their mother, their father, or these type of problems, okay? Otherwise, this can be um, a big issue for your lessons. Mistake number five is not charging for extra work. Okay, so it's part of our job to correct homework, but there are some students that they really need more. They need extra homework, especially if they are preparing for an exam. So just be realistic. If this student is going to be sending you three, four, five writings per week, you cannot be doing this for free because this is going to take you more than one or two hours of, of your week. Okay, so be realistic. At the beginning, you tell the student, look, I can accept this amount of writing writings per week. If you are going to send me more than that, I will have to charge you for one extra class or, or something like that, you know, just find a good deal for the student and for yourself. But don't do this for free, especially if you've got 20 students, 30 students, just imagine all of them sending you texts. You, you would have 20 texts to correct every single day. Okay, so if you're sending homework, not, not texts, not writings, um, try to use the page that they can check the answers themselves so they don't have to be sending you constant emails and, and stuff for you to correct okay so very clear from the beginning still talking about homework one of my mistakes was sending too much things for people that don't have time to do them so you have to be realistic okay so when students start usually they're very excited and they go like yes please send me loads of things because i've got two hours per day i'm going to study and so you spend time preparing the homework because of course you have to look for websites you have to look for exercises sometimes you are talking about a random topic so you have to create the homework or or you have to look for things, right? You you wait, you spend, no ways, you spend your time looking for things for them to do. But then they are too busy with their work, they cannot do it. Or if they are teenagers, they've got loads of, of exams at school. If they are children, they've got other interests. So basically what happens is you send a lot of things, they don't do it. And this just leads to frustration. They get frustrated because they remember, oh my God, I haven't done my homework from yesterday the teacher is going to be upset and you get frustrated as well because you spend time looking for things and they are not really doing anything so be realistic if they work so let's say i'm going to send you free emails with homework for the week if you've got time you you do then right if not we can do it next week so be realistic if they are having an exam or something like that, of course, they will have to work harder on it, but you have to adapt the homework to their kind of lifestyle, okay? Number seven is planning too much. Okay, so don't over plan your lessons. When I first started, I was very strict with everything. So the warm up needs to take us five minutes. Then we have to talk to uh, about this activity. We have to go and talk about this verb. But real life is not really like that. You know, sometimes you're going to realize your student needs a bit more time with this activity or maybe they're going to ask you questions that you were not expecting and you were talking about second condition of um, that is a word talking about an animal when the guy is asking you about an animal so you're not going to say no let's just stick to the lesson plan because we don't have time for this okay so sometimes it's just a good idea to let it flow of course always you know try try to keep the focus and try to keep the goals but keep in mind that you can just let it be sometimes. So the eighth thing I wish I knew when I started teaching online is that choosing common topics can help us save time as teachers. So if you teach full time as I do, I teach 40 to 50 hours um, per week, you know that we have to be very creative and there are loads of different profiles of students, you know, age. So they really want to talk about different things. 
but there are some common topics that can fit all lessons all right so for example let's talk about customer service what's your favorite restaurant or blood donation maybe so there are things that everyone knows a bit about it so if you do that of course i'm not talking about specific um students that need business english or this is another thing but when talking about general lessons if you find common topics you can use the same lesson for 10 different students and this is going to save your time and this is going to make your life easier number nine is not being prepared for technical problems so what are you going to do if your wi-fi stops working in the middle of the lesson or if the student's wi-fi is not working if the electricity is is cut off for some time you know so you have to think about these things before teaching before starting the lesson so you can anticipate possible problems and you can have solutions so in my case for example i've got a phone with enough data so if my wi-fi stops working i can just um, use the hotspot or I've got also a battery, a battery charger, so it doesn't need to be plugged in. And if I feel that we wasted time because of me, I mean, it was my fault, it was my computer, what I do is I add some extra time to the end of the lesson so the student doesn't feel bad, like, well, her computer was not working and, and I'm going to miss 10 minutes, you know, to, to not have 10 minutes of my lesson. So what I do is if I don't have time because I've got another lesson after after this one, I'm just going to give the student 10 extra minutes the next lesson. So they feel it's fair, it's fair for everyone. But have a plan B, you know, you have to have a plan B. If it's not working, you have to be quick in, in solving it, okay? The last thing I wish I knew before becoming an online teacher is how rewarding and challenging it can be. Okay, so very rewarding, beautiful to see my students progress, beautiful to work from home. So I can work from anywhere. I can just take my computer with me, you know, and travel in case I, I want to do it. Um, there are loads of nice things about it. The rates, as I teach direct students, I set my own rates so I don't have to pay commissions. I don't have bosses. So basically, there are loads of pros in, in doing that. At the same time, it is challenging because I'm creating my own material. You know, I'm dealing with payments, so I have to be talking to students all the time. Sometimes, you know, it's a bit too much because, of course, um, sometimes you're not working, it's weekend and they are talking to you. You have to, to organize your next um, lessons, your next week. So it can be challenging as well. So one thing I would say is, um, sometimes it's not, the world is not really boring, but sometimes you have to remember there is life outside of the computer as well. Okay, because sometimes I just see myself like, oh my God, I have been at home for like five days. You know, I really have to go out and see the sun. So basically, remember that you have to find a balance. Okay, so you cannot be stuck in front of this screen all the time. It's very different from a face-to-face -face setting where you are talking to people, moving. So you do have to um, find time for yourself to exercise because you've been sitting, you are going to be sitting down for a long, long time. So try to think about yourself as well. Okay, but apart from that, it's just amazing. Okay, <laughs> so I hope my mistakes help you not to make the same the same mistakes and thumbs up if you like oh thumbs up if you liked this video and see you guys in the next one bye bye